This is a, a foundational transformation we see happening in the economy. DeFi and blockchain are redefining business, economy, and ultimately society. Hey everyone, welcome to our new podcast, Redefine. I'm Jeremy Allman, and I'm here with my awesome co-host, Megan Guy. What's up, Megan? Hey, Jeremy. Um, super excited to be here. We've been talking about this podcast for a long time, and I'm excited to talk with some smart people in the space um, and better tell the story, uh, not of crypto as much as of blockchain and how that technology is being used in the world today and you know the promise and peril it brings. Yeah, I mean, you and I have been talking about this pod for like, I don't know, what, over a year? Something like that? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and the space has definitely shifted, but I but I'd almost think the central conversation we've been meaning to have for over a year is is almost more valid now, which is um you know, blockchain, Bitcoin, and sort of the financial software that um we believe is being reimagined. Builders have continued to build, right? Um and in hype cycles and up cycles, down cycles, um, you know, very surface things to me. But in the middle of 10 years, at least I've been in the space, we've actually just seen a lot of really amazing new infrastructure being um, created that I think is ultimately going to transform, you know, the economy and society. But those stories don't get told as much. So um, why do you think in the middle of this now, does it does it matter? Because this is kind of a weird time to start a pod, right? Yeah, well, a pod focused on blockchain and crypto for sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, look, I, I think... Um, so I'm an investor in my day job. Um, I run a VC fund uh, called King River Capital. We've been active in the space for several years. Um, and I think one thing I've really seen in the wake of FTX's collapse and you know the whole sector kind of repricing and um, a lot of companies, you know, and previously successful entrepreneurs washing out um, is there are a lot of really smart people that I think are just in danger of throwing out the baby with the bathwater, <laughs> as mm -hmm. they say. Um, and I think a lot of what crypto has brought um, and some of the speculation and the act of trading and, um, you know, obviously FTX, I think a lot of people have gotten very smart about crypto exchanges. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, that's that's what's in the news, right, in the reporting. So even if you weren't deep in this space before, that's the story you're hearing. And what isn't being talked about, what wasn't being talked about really before that, but but even more now, I think, getting buried in the narrative is that, uh, you know, distributed ledger technology and blockchain offer uh, some really exciting innovations, I think, to the mm -hmm. way that um, our financial system works, to who gets to participate in it, um, to the cost <laughs> of, of, of people to participate. Um, and, you know, I agree with you that, we're at the precipice of kind of a whole reimagining of what that core infrastructure looks like. Just like, you know, you, you talk all the time about there's a whole side of this story that, that just hasn't really been told. So that's what I would like to redefine as we talk about blockchain in 2023. Yeah. You know, you know, the, the untold story, it's interesting. You talked about your, your, your day job um, at King River Capital and as a, as an investor looking at blockchain and, and, and how you got involved. You know, I think, you know, my day job is is as a builder and operator, right? So I, I run at the day level um, a B two B payment network called Paystand. It's a blockchain enabled um, commercial payment network that's trying to decentralize the financial system and create radically better economics for for businesses all over the world. Um, but my origin story with blockchain actually predates that company. Um, you know, I I I got involved first um, coming out of you know financial services has just been broken and messed up for a long time you talk about ftx today um but 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 that's just the latest in so many so many bad stories right um and yeah. at least for me the origin version is in 2008 in the great financial crisis like so many millions of people americans all over the world got affected when banks fundamentally let them down um you know my my family was one of them they lost their their house in the financial crisis and um, that sent me down this rabbit hole in 2008 2009 on you know, how does financial infrastructure in our economy become fundamentally more fair? Um, you know, and, and out of that ethos was a bunch of early builders um, where, where Bitcoin originated um, and decentralized sort of financial infrastructure originated. I've seen I've seen everything from, you know, in the, the early days, Mt. Gox 
kind of had this big run up and then that was the first exchange that blew up and then you know there's I don't know, whatever, dozens of stories in between that and FTX and um, the price goes up and the price goes down. But in the middle of all of that, I, I, what I watched is this thing that started off almost like the early internet where um, people just fundamentally believed more open technology that could democratize a fairly, um, you, you know, a closed system that, that benefited only a few could be opened up. And there was this ethos of belief that technology could imagine a world that was better. I want to really celebrate where the real work's happening and shine light on where I think there's been way too much hype. And instead go, wow, look at how much institutional involvement. Wow, look, countries are involved. Like, wow, look at how much um, everyday people are, are using um, yeah. Bitcoin and blockchain now. Um, and, and that's so different than 10 years ago, 12 years ago when I got involved in this space, right? I, I use Paystand as an example frequently when I'm talking with people about the promise that this offers. Um, you know, it's not an idea. It's a real company with, you know, substantial revenue and real customers. And, you know, I think you guys became a unicorn last year, which is very exciting. Um, but underneath that is like, it's it's not a hype cycle. It's really improving the core economics of the B2B payments business for, you know, all kinds of companies um, across the world where uh, they're buying on ROI, not because they want to participate in crypto, right? Oh, wow. um, and so those are sort of some of the people that I'd like to hear from because I don't think anyone is out talking, <laughs> you know, with a uh, small and mid-sized enterprise <laughs> about how blockchain is revolutionizing their cash cycles and, you know, the way that they're thinking about um, the CFO function, as an mm -hmm. example. Um, and there are so many more stories like that of folks that, you know, are doing things that wouldn't have been possible 10 years ago and creating new markets, new opportunities, new creativity <laughs> in some cases. Um, and all that's being enabled by this fundamental technology. That yeah. Well, and it's one of the things that, you know, you, you and I bonded on a lot is a, a lot of the investments you've done um, and a lot of the, the space you and I look at together. I, I don't want to call it unsexy, but it, but it's where the real actual building's happening. And, um, you know, I, I think one of the things I'm excited about having more guests on is there's incredible people building incredible things whose story is not being told. And so you get to invest in some of those companies. I get to have peers that are working in those companies. And um, what I think is actually exciting about that is like the best movements are bigger than one company or idea or person, right? And that's actually what I believe Bitcoin and blockchain actually represent is, is an idea with technology that's a movement that's bigger than any one. And so I want to really celebrate those stories. So um, what should our audience look forward to? Because it's kind of an intro into, you know, our hopes and dreams. We've got a few <laughs> guests that I think we're going to bring on and and talk about this. And, and so what should people expect? Yeah, I think, you know, candid conversation and a, a deeper exploration, um, as you've said, of how these things are being built. Um, and I think I'd love to talk about some of the trade-offs in that too, right? Um, we've seen, we first saw a lot of very positive hype <laughs> around the crypto space. We've since seen, you know, a lot of the downsides and some of the huge mistakes um, and, and bad actors and actions that happened. Um, and I think like with any new technology, there are trade-offs and there are decisions you make as a builder um, where you get an advantage in one place at you know the expense of um, adding more risk in a different place. And so I want to hear from the people who are making those decisions, how they're thinking through those bigger implications and you know some of the ethical questions too. Um, so I hope an active, open conversation. And you know as we as we grow and proceed and you know build, we hope a very enthusiastic, uh, dare I say, rabid fan base. <laughs> we'd love to hear from all of you about. What are the questions on your mind and who are the people you want to hear from and um, how does this intersect, you know, at, at its core, I think, with like the bigger questions of us as cultures and as a society, uh, what role does blockchain play um, and, and how do we do it, you know? Yeah. And I mean, this is such a unique time to do this. It's why now? It's because it actually matters now, right? Like the, the scale that it's getting to actually does have impact. And I do believe... Um, sometimes in the in in when things are low key or in the quiet moments, that's actually where the inflection points are happening. You just don't necessarily see it. Um, mm -hmm. And so I'm really excited because a lot of the guests that I think we're going to bring on, hopefully, we'll have like an insider view. It's almost 
you know, like if we were sitting down, you, I, and a few, you know, operators for dinner or beers or wine or whatever, and just having an open conversation, right? Um, and so, I mean, that's the cool thing. We have no agenda. We're just going to show up with, with hopefully smart people doing real work, building real things, um, you know, and hopefully have a little bit of an insider view. Um, so uh, look for us in probably a couple of weeks. Our first set of episodes will launch. Um, we'd love to hear from you guys about topics. And um, you can find us in uh, at Redefined. I'm Jeremy Allman. I'm Megan Guy. See you guys soon. Awesome. Thanks, Jeremy. <laughs>